Welcome back to my channel Only Bani. Presenting up the NEET 2020 paper MCQs from 11 to 20 with detailed explanation. The first question relates with the chapter Biochemistry of Cell. And the question is, identify the substances having glycosidic bond and peptide bond respectively in their structure. And the options given are A. Glycerol and Trypsin B. Cellulose and Lecithin C. Inulin and Insulin D. Chitin and Cholesterol And the correct answer for this question is C. Now friends, let's understand all this. Glycerol, the first option that is given is Glycerol and Trypsin of which glycerol is a lipid okay and trypsin is an enzyme which you know is produced in the form of a proenzyme form that is trypsinogen then the b option is cellulose and lecithin cellulose is a polysaccharide consisting of several hundreds or thousands of uh, glucose units and we all know it's an important component a structural component of the cell wall of the green plants and many algae. Then lecithin, it is something like a yellowish brown fatty substance. Okay, and uh, it is said to be amphiphilic. You might have been uh, knowing about it. Then is inulin. Now in inulin ke baare mein hum zada nahi sunte. Insulin kafi suna hai. Inulin kya hai? So inulins are a group of naturally occurring polysaccharides which are produced by many types of plants and they belong to the class of dietary fibers known as fructins. Now this is used by some plants as a means of storing energy and is typically found in the roots or rhizomes. That is what is meant by inulin. So it is a heterogeneous collection of fructose polymers. Okay, fructose polymers, fructins, which we look at. And insulin, we know it's a peptide hormone. Now, Rahi baat about chitin. So, chitin also is a fibrous substance consisting of polysaccharides. But, uski saath combination mein diya hai, cholesterol, that's a fat-like substance. And we know that's found in all the cells of our body. So, here the right answer comes to be C. Question relates with the chapter genes. And the question is, Name the enzyme that facilitates the opening of DNA helix during transcription. Now friends, here few of you might have got confused because aap log jab ye question padte ho, to name the enzyme that facilitates opening of DNA helix. Isi se aapke dimag mein answer shuru ho jata hai. Because opening of DNA helix is dada tar aap isko relate karoge with the DNA replication process. And if you relate the replication process ke relate karte ho, to there are chances that you actually don't come to the right answer because here the question given is during transcription. And the options given are A. DNA helicase B. DNA polymerase C. RNA polymerase and D. DNA ligase And the correct answer here is C. RNA polymerase Now see Pella jo option hai DNA helicase. That's essential during DNA replication because that separates the double-stranded DNA into single strands. And this is how it allows each strand to be copied. Okay, so yaan par aap confuse honi ka chance hai. DNA polymerase, the second option, it's a family of enzymes that catalyzes the synthesis of DNA molecules. Okay, and these are essential for DNA replication and it usually works in groups to create two identical DNA duplexes from a single original duplex. Then the option C that is RNA polymerase, that's an enzyme that synthesizes RNA from a DNA template. And using the enzyme helicase, RNA locally opens the double-stranded DNA, I mean RNA polymerase. So that one strand of the exposed nucleotides can be used as a template for the synthesis of RNA and this is what is called as the transcription process. Option D, hai, that is DNA ligase, as the term tells you, ligation, it helps in uh, what you can say, stitching sort of an action, wherein it catalyzes the formation of a phosphodiester bond 
and helps in repair repairing the single stranded breaks in the duplex dna in all the living organisms the next question relates with cockroach if the head of cockroach is removed it may live for few days because dash and the options given are a the cockroach does not have nervous system b the head holds a small portion of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral part of the body c the head holds a one third of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the dorsal part of its body d the supra esophageal ganglia of the cockroach are situated in the ventral part of the abdomen and the correct answer is b the head holds a small portion of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral part of its body now why is this so see to understand why cockroaches for that matter many other insects can survive decapitation ab maine janboojh ke yahan par ek naya word dala hai decapitation that is nothing but the removal of head matlab tomorrow i can twist this question and say if there is decapitation done in case of cockroaches what would be the result so aapko ye yaad rakhna hai ki decapitation is the removal of head now uh, please understand ki there was one i remember there was one funny question that was been asked in uh, one of my classes yahan par ek bachche ne pucha humans can't survive like this after decapitation right then how come such small creatures can see to understand this you have to remember in humans there is going to be a major uh, problem that's a blood loss and a drop in the blood pressure and this would hamper the transport of oxygen and nutrition to vital tissues and this will lead us or bleed us to death right in addition humans breathe through their mouth or nose and the brain controls this function so breathing also would stop with decapitation in case of human beings right so also we can't eat without the head so all these are the complex things cockroaches do not have the same kind of circulatory system as humans right cockroaches me kaise hai the hardy worm and it breathes through spiracles right the it has a brain that does not control this breathing process so it can uh, carry out like this without the head as well for some time also they are poikilothermic they are cold blooded so they do not spend energy to heat themselves up so they can get by on much less food than what humans need okay they have lumps of ganglia that is a nerve tissue distributed within each body segment so there are many reasons why the uh, insects can stay longer even after decapitation the next question relates with the chapter human respiration and the question is select the correct events that occur during inspiration a contraction of the diaphragm b contraction of external intercostal muscles c pulmonary volume decreases d intrapulmonary pressure increases and the options given are a c and d that is one and two you may see here b a b d three only d and four a and b and the correct answer is a and b the this contraction of the diaphragm and contraction of external intercostal muscles now remember during inspiration the diaphragm contracts and pulls downwards while the muscles between the ribs yani ki intercostal muscles costae is for ribs so intercostal in between the ribs they contract and pull upwards and this increases the size of the thoracic cavity and decreases the pressure inside so pressure kam hota hai as compared to the external pressure this is the reason why the air rushes in and fills the lungs the next question is connected with the chapter animal husbandry and the question is by which method was a new breed hisar dale of sheep formed by using bicaneri eaves and merino rams and the options are a mutational breeding b cross breeding c inbreeding and d outcrossing and the correct answer for this is cross breeding now let's understand the option first that is mutational breeding which is sometimes called as variation breeding it is a process of exposing the seeds to the chemicals or radiation in order to generate mutants with desirable traits 
okay so a kind of mutagenic you can say why because they have undergone mutations cross breeding is the process of breeding with the intention to create an offspring that shares the traits of both the parent lineages or to produce an animal with hybrid vigor that is an improved biological quality in hybrid offspring the hisar dale is a new breed of sheep developed in punjab by crossing the kaneri eve and merino ram in cross breeding method superior males of one breed are mated with superior females of another breed so this allows the desirable qualities of two different breeds to get combined and the progeny may be used for commercial production many new animal breeds have been developed by this approach okay hybrids are the major application of biotechnology which mainly aims at improving the yield now the option c is in breeding which is the production of offspring from the mating or breeding of individuals or organisms that are closely related genetically and the option d that is out crossing also called as out breeding it is the technique of crossing between different breeds with no common ancestor this is the practice of introducing unrelated genetic material into a breeding line to increase the genetic diversity the next question relates with the chapter biochemistry of cell and the question is which one of the following is the most abundant protein in the animals and the options given are a collagen b lectin c insulin and d hemoglobin and the correct answer for this question is a collagen remember collagen is the main structural protein in the extracellular matrix in various connective tissues of the body most abundant protein in mammals it almost makes 25 to 35% of the whole body protein content quite big 25 to 35% okay that's quite a big amount right and this consists of amino acids which are bound together to form a triple helix of elongated fibrils known as collagen helix it is seen in the tissues such as cartilage bones tendons ligaments and skin it forms a major component that is what you are supposed to remember then gelatin jo aap bolte ho which is used in industry food industry that is nothing but collagen which is irreversibly hydrolyzed then the option b that is lectins not lecithin it's lectin lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins that are highly specific for sugar groups of other molecules and so cause a glutenation of particular cells or precipitation of glycoconjugates and polysaccharides now insulin we know is a hormone and hemoglobin we all know it's what it's a conjugated protein The next question relates with the chapter genetic basis of inheritance and the question is how many true breeding pea plant varieties did mendel select as the pairs which were similar except in one character with contrasting traits a 2 b 14 c 8 and d 4 and the correct answer is b there were seven pairs of contrasting traits if you remember This is quite an easier question. This question relates with the chapter sexual reproduction in angiosperms and the question is the body of the ovule is fused within the funicle at dash and the options given are a micropyle b nucellus c chelaza and d hilum and the correct answer is d that is hilum Now look on the screen to understand what exactly it is. You can see a ovule, a typical ovule, angiospermic ovule. In the seed plants, though, of course, this is anatropous. You might have even studied the orthotropous ovule. In seed plants, the ovule is the structure that gives rise to and contains the female reproductive cell, mainly made up of three parts: the integument, which forms its outer layer. then the nucellus which is the remnant of the megasporangium in a way and the female gametophyte that is formed from a haploid megaspore in its center and hilum is a scar left by the stalk which attached the ovule to the ovary wall before it became a seed 
question relates with the chapter classification and the chapter i mean the question is which of the following is correct about viroids the options are a they have free rna without protein coat b they have dna without with protein coat c they have free dna without protein coat and d they have rna with protein coat and the correct answer is a they have free rna without protein coat now remember viroids are the smallest infectious pathogens known they compose solely of a short strand of circular single stranded rna that has no protein coating all known viroids are inhabitants of higher plants and most cause diseases whose respective economic importance on humans it varies widely now the next question relates with the chapter respiration and the question is the number of substrate level phosphorylations in one turn of citric acid cycle you know that's the krebs cycle is and the options are a 1 b 2 c 3 d 0 and the correct option is 1 look on the screen just to understand substrate level phosphorylation this is a metabolic reaction that results in the formation of atp or gtp by conversion of a higher energy substrate into lower energy product and using some of the released energy that is called as the gibbs free energy to transfer a phosphoryl group to adp or gdp from another phosphorylated compound you can see here the enzyme and the substrate right the enzyme is being attached with it it uh, is taking up the phosphate group and transferring it to adp thereby forming the atp unlike oxidative phosphorylation oxidation and phosphorylation are not coupled in the process of substrate level phosphorylation and reactive intermediates are most often gained in the course of oxidation process in catabolism friends like if you have really liked the video subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell icon thank you